non-doing, the way to transformation. Man is always interested in doing this or that. Doing is the way of the world. Doing is the way of the known. We want to do this, we want to do that, the doer remains again. Non-doing is a state of meditation. Non-doing is a state when you allow the things to happen. You are not making any efforts, but the things are happening on its own. If one experiences or understands inwardly the deep feeling of becoming a dry leaf, we moved only by the existence itself. Then how can one push oneself to breathe or jump or do anything at all? but lie flat on the earth and dissolve. When a leaf falls from the tree, a dry leaf, it is in a state of not doing. It just leaves itself at the mercy of the breeze, tossing and turning. It comes down on the ground and settles. Meditation gives you that experience and brings that understanding inwardly. It brings inwardly a feeling of becoming a dry leaf that moves only by the existence itself. And if this happens, then how can one push oneself to breathe or jump or do anything at all but lie flat on the earth and dissolve? Experience and understanding are two different things. If you experience this, there is no need to ask the question. Just lie flat on the ground and dissolve. There is no need to ask any question. When you experience something, it naturally and spontaneously brings understanding then there is no question of asking. This is an act. You are doing something. No dry leaf has ever asked any question. You may say leaf does not speak. But the very question shows that intellectually you understand, but you do not experience any such thing. Many times things happen spontaneously in your life, but you don't understand those. And you ask a question because there is a wide gap between the experiencing and understanding. Many things, but the very question shows that intellectually you understand, but you have not experienced any such things. Indeed, intellectual understanding cannot become the understanding at all. There is a vast difference between intellectual understanding and existential understanding. Intellectual understanding is just an appearance of understanding. It is like a theoretical understanding. In reality, it is not understanding at all in any way. Why do I say this? I read the sentence, I will read the sentence, you will feel why. If one experiences or understands, you cannot use the word oh, because they are not the same thing. If one experiences or understands, you cannot use the word oh, because they are not the same thing. Either you experience or you do not experience. First thing, intellectual understanding differs completely from experience. Or understands inwardly the deep feeling of becoming a dry leaf to be moved only by the existence itself. If it happens, then how can you push yourself to breathe or jump or do anything at all, lying flat on the earth and dissolve? 
you will have to do that also to lie flat on the earth. And if you can do that, why can't you push, jump and breathe? I'll tell you an anecdote to explain this. It happened. One Zen monk, Dozen, used to tell his disciples, unless you die, you will not be reborn. This is the famous statement of Jesus. Unless you die, you are not reborn. And out of this, a particular sect of Christianity evolved born again Christians. But this born again is the way of Hindus. And one who dies to the world is called a second born or a virgin. So one stupid disciple thought, if this is the key, then I must try. So one day he came and did just as you have said. You must have lain with eyes closed, flat in front of the door of the master. Just in the morning when the master was expected to come out with morning prayer, the master opened the door and found that his disciple was lying there, not breathing, as if dead. And the master doesn't said, okay, do it well. So the disciple opened one eye just to see the expression on the face of the master. And Dozen said, stupid, dead men do not open their eyes. You will have to do that also to lie flat on the ground. But that will be your doing. When leaf falls, he does not open his eye to see what is happening. He just remains there totally relaxed. And these breathing exercises are to help you so that it can happen. And it is not your doing. All these techniques of meditation are to help you to come to this realization when suddenly you feel that it is happening, you have fallen on the ground, dissolved. In the ancient art of warfare, even up to the 19th century, it was shown when enemy thinks you have died. The practice of the holding the breath for a longer period of time is the only way to escape the, from the clutches of the enemy. It happened during the time of the India's independence war in 1857. It was the era when Queen of Jhansi Lakshmi Bai was ruling over the was creating terror for Britishers. Her master, Tatya Tope, was captured by the enemy camps and he was seriously wounded. He fell on the ground. He held on to his breath for a while until the enemy, the Britishers, came near him because they knew him to be a very courageous man. Even if he is lying on the ground any moment, he can just jump over and kill the person who comes near him. So they waited for a while. When there was no movement, Tatya knew this. So he held on to his breath to the And when after a while there was no movement, the enemy, the Britishers, the captain, came closer to him and felt his pulse. There was no movement. They declared him dead and moved away. Tatya remained in the same state holding on to his breath until he felt that the enemies, the British soldiers and the captain had moved away, leaving the body there. He got up. He was wounded and he was resurrected. To the soldiers earlier on, during the princely states, it was taught it was an art of meditation. 
So when the disciple opened one eye just to see the expression on the face of the master, Dojan said, stupid, dead men do not open their eyes. You will have to do that also, to lie flat on the ground, but that will be your doing. And these breathing exercises are there to help you so that it can happen and it is not your doing. When you hold your breath, then it is not your doing. All these techniques of meditations are to help you to come to this realization when suddenly you feel that it is happening, you have fallen on the ground, dissolving. But that should not be something done on your part. You cannot do it. If it is a doing, the whole point is lost. It must be a spontaneous happening. And right now, whatsoever you do will not be spontaneous. Whatsoever you are doing, you have to make an effort. And I know that you have to make efforts even for breathing. In meditation, the breathing slows down naturally and spontaneously. You have to make an effort for breathing, for catharsis, and for creating the sound of food. And you have to bring all efforts possible. These efforts are not going to become your enlightenment because enlightenment is never achieved through efforts. These efforts will help you. They will bring you to a point where you can become effortless. You have to start with the effort. When the effort becomes spontaneous, and automatically a stage comes when you are effortless. It is through doing that you reach to this state when non-doing becomes possible. But these efforts will help you. They will bring you to a point where you can become effortless. And when you become effortless, enlightenment is always. You can stop them, but just by stopping them, nothing will happen. Continue them. Do them as totally as possible. Whenever these moments of non-doing comes, cherish them. Continue them and do them as totally as possible because then you will come to realize sooner that nothing can be achieved through efforts. You look at everything. You go into any act and you will realize the moment you reach the state of non-doing, the effortlessness, that's where the results begin to happen. But we go on overlooking and consider this to be our doing, that it is through my doing that I have been able to achieve this. But when doing reaches to its totality, it becomes non-doing or effortlessness. All your efforts at the pinnacle, at the peak, becomes effortlessness. Nothing can be achieved through efforts. You have to realize this. I can see this, but this will not be of much help. I know well that just by breathing fast, you are not going to enter into nirvana. I know it well. And just by crying and dancing, no one has ever entered there. Even if the door is open, they will close it. If they see that you are coming or any other active meditation, they will close the door. This I know well. I have heard one Christian missionary was giving a sermon to a middle school student small boys and girls. After the sermon, he asked, those who want to go heaven should raise their hands. So all the boys except one raised their hands. All the boys except one raised their hands. Only one boy, someone called Johnny, remained silent. The missionary asked, 
Do you not want to go to heaven? Johnny said, not with this bunch of Johnny said, not with this bunch of So if you are doing active meditation, even I cannot enter with you. It is impossible. But I know that these meditations are not to end. It is just to prepare you so that you can drop automatically. It is to exhaust you and your ego. It is to exhaust your mind, your body and your individuality. And when your individuality is exhausted completely, your ego vanishes completely, you will drop on the ground like a dry but will not like Dojo's disciple. If he could have done the active meditation, the whole story would have been different. Then there would have been no need to lie down on the ground. He would have fallen on the ground after intense doing. And if you have to lie down, that shows only you are withholding yourself. You are not really exhausted. If you simply move totally in whatsoever I am saying to do, you will get exhausted. You will have a certain amount of energy, a limited amount of energy, and that energy can be exhausted. Once exhausted, once the energy that is there in you, generated, is exhausted, you will become like a dry leaf, a dead leaf. When you cannot do anything, when you reach to that point where nothing more can be done, then can not do enough. When all your efforts come to an end, all your energies are exhausted thus. You reach to a point where you cannot even take one more step. If you are jogging, you reach to a point where you cannot take even uh, half a jog. Your energies are exhausted. But the second, second door of the energy love is not over. You can certainly enter the state of not doing, not doing will happen. While you can do something, not doing becomes impossible. And unless the doing takes you to the state of non doing, you cannot enter the inner caves of meditation. All active meditations are efforts to exhaust your energies to bring you to that point where you cannot enter any more into acting. All of a sudden the energies are exhausted and you enter the state of non-doing. Non-doing is the way to transformation.